Yahalah, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shah of Mashiach. That's all praise to the Most High in the name of Yahweh Shah, his only begotten son, right? Uh, the Messiah. So, just want to say shalom, everybody. You know, we're going to do another video. Sister uh, Zara Israel, I hope I didn't pronounce your name wrong or anything, but she did ask for a video um, going into mushrooms right she asked about it, uh, a lot of people seen the uh cmos video uh a lot of people understood the message coming from the cmos video some people did not but it's not to argue and go back and forth uh every message is given everybody don't see it you know uh hopefully time will pass and the law will reveal it to be true but uh getting just go ahead and moving along we'll get into some scriptures dealing with mushrooms okay so uh the thing with mushrooms right is the first thing you need to really know is what are mushrooms right is it a, is it a fruit is it a vegetable what is it so we just go straight to google and uh what this is being and we'll look at uh the definition of mushrooms so here we go uh we do have it on the screen mushrooms Mushrooms are the fruit and body common to many species of fungi and are used to store and release spores into the environment. So this is the first definition. It say mushrooms are the fruit and body common to many species of fungi. So where does mushrooms come from? Mushrooms come from fungi. Now, I know that there's people coming out and they are uh, doctors or whatever. I know they got a big push on uh uh, mushroom coffee if you look at youtube they got these commercials for mushroom coffee all over the place okay but i want you guys to really understand this i make videos for israelites i don't make videos for the world see the difference between us and the heathen is we are set apart and they are not we were given the law statute and commandments and they were not okay so we have to understand the simple the simpleness of things. Okay. So it's a it is a species of fungi. I'm gonna read the go ahead and read um the second definition. A mushroom is made from a collection of fungal cells called hyphae, hyphae. By fresh weight, the common commercially grown mushrooms is more than 90% water, less than 3% protein, less than 5% carbohydrate less than 1% fat, and about 1% mineral salts and vitamins. Edible mushrooms consist of chitin, glutens, and proteins present in the cell wall, making them a good source for dietary fiber. Now, this is the world's definition, right? The, the world is telling you that, oh, that's a good source for dietary fiber. They say most mushrooms are 90% water, less than 3% protein, Less than 5% carbohydrates, less than 1% fat, and about 1% mineral salts and vitamins. So that tells me that you don't get much nutritional value from it. And even if, even, even if you did, let's just say that you did, it doesn't matter because we were given law, statute, and commandments from the most high, right? So let's, let's pull the scripture real quick. I want to pull, um, I think it's the rock. Let me see. The rock 17. I believe it's verse 11. Okay, yeah. Let's see. Lord, uh, this is the rock, right? The rock is in the Apocrypha, also known as Ecclesiasticus. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage, right? So that knowledge, that understanding, that's referring to the word of God, which we find today in the Bible, right? The scriptures. So he gave that to them, the them being who? Israel. If we are claiming to be Israelites, right? That means we have to eat from the tree, right? Our tree in the garden. Our tree is the word of God. Remember the scriptures say, um, that uh not on bread alone but uh, every word of the, every word of the living god right 
So we eat of the the bread of the word of the living God. So we we got to understand this. This is not just um, everything is not just about milk. The the, the more you in the scriptures, you got to start digesting the meat of things, right? We don't deal with the world. With our life, right? We 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 grew up heathens. We grew up Gentiles, right? We were called to be Israelites. So we're coming out of the darkness into the light. And in order to do that, we have to change our mindset, change our understanding of how things work, right? Most of us are in where? Babylon, right? We're in Babylon. They teach you this. They teach you that. Media is killing you. The pharmaceutical uh, companies are killing you. They tell you this. For years, for years, they told you milk make the body strong. Now, they, now they stop. They stop. Uh, the advertising for milk make your body strong, but what they didn't do was they didn't go back and retract it, and and, and because milk makes the bones weak, if you haven't figured that out yet, milk makes you sick. You know, milk has pus and stuff in it, right? Cow milk, so you don't you it makes you sick, right? Uh, one good thing you go look at uh on Netflix is a show, it's a, like a documentary called What the Help. They have a lot of great information in what the hell on Netflix. Check it out. One of the doctors going into the milk situation, how to milk make your bones weak. The pharmaceuticals and these quote unquote white coat doctors, right? They teach you how to be sick, right? They, 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 they teach you how to be sick to keep it going so they can make more money and money and money, 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 money. It's all about the dollar to them. Okay. They don't, they don't give you, uh, they, they don't do preventive medicine. You understand what I'm saying? Like if they tell you, Hey, if you eat this, if you stop eating this way and eat this way, you would never get cancer. So you will never have to worry about beating cancer, but they rather you get cancer and then, okay, we're going to do this. Do no, you tell a person from the get go, don't, don't eat this, this, and this. If you go pay attention to like the FDA standards and stuff for like processed meat, they tell you processed meat cause cancer. But so why don't they take it off the shelf? Well, because they don't make money like that. Okay? The FDA is controlled by the government. The government is not for the people. So back to us, uh, back to the scripture. He made an, uh, I'm sorry, beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. A heritage. Our heritage is the whole scripture. The scriptures literally tells us how we should live our lives, what we should eat, how we should walk, how we should treat each other, how we should look at the world as a whole. It's all found within the scriptures. Okay, so let's go back to the definition. Uh, now, was one thing I wanted to point out. Where is it? A mushroom is made from a collection of fungal cells. So let's look up this word fungal. Look, it's right here fungal of or caused by a fungus or a fungi right so let's see if we can get a better definition uh well fungus of relating to resembling characteristics of a fungus no what are fungal things fungal things have something to do with a fungus or an organism that produces spores okay so that's your that's your um that's gonna be your mushroom. So let's look up fungus. You gotta go look up these things. And I'm and I and when the sister that uh sister Zara uh that brought it up, I, I was I was honest with her because we need to be honest. I loved eating mushrooms. I did. But it was when I came into the truth, I started really thinking about okay, what should I be putting into my body? And the Lord tell you what you can and cannot. Right. So when I went and looked it up, oh, this is this is fungus. Right. Where do you mostly see mushrooms? Right. I always have dogs. I have always had dogs since I was little. I always see mushrooms in my yard. They come from the, the doo doo. Bacteria and stuff. Not all mushrooms come from there. You got some that come from what? They that sprout on trees. I looked up one place to say that that also could come from dog piss or animal piss, where the, the the mushrooms will spring out from a tree. But there's other ways that mushrooms will spring out. But the point is, 
Mushrooms are always a type of fungus. A fungus. The, nowhere in the scripture do the Lord tell you to eat a fungus. A fungus. Here we go. Any of a group of spore producing organisms feeding on organic matter, including molds, yeast, mushrooms, toadstools. Do you think you can eat mold? Mold is in the same category as mushrooms. Yeast. Yeast is not the best for you. Uh, you add yeast to stuff, yeast uh, actually kills, uh, um, uh, eats away at things, right? So yeast is not good for you. Yeast can cause problems with you. Yeast causes a lot of bloating, right? Yeast, uh, uh, I had a chef, a, a baker was like, that. she was trying to explain it, but she was like, yeast, you put yeast in bread and it's kind of like, it kills the that's why the bread expands it's eating away at the nutrients and then that causes the bread to expand that's why flat bread is better for you see toadstools all these this is, i think this is a toadstool right look at this fungal inf infection especially on fish so these things are not good for you and then they telling you they don't tell you it's, a, it's bacteria and then they tell you oh we oh we got protein in there though they got protein. Are we going to overlook the fact that it's a fungus for the for the, the small percentage of protein and, and mineral and vitamins when you can just simply bypass the, the fungus and eat the things the Lord tell you? See, let the rest of the world do that. Let the heathens. The heathens don't have any laws, right? They don't have any way of life. Right? Their bodies are actually built different, just like the pork thing, the shrimp, crab, the lobster. The Lord never commanded them not to eat those things. So on Judgment Day, when he's judging everybody, right, we all know that the heathens, they will be heathens in the kingdom uh, coming to um, servitude. He's not going to judge them according to they eat pork or not, right? He's going to judge them according to what he's going to judge them of. But you for eating pork, or Israelite, that's condemnation for that. You see, there's more things. So don't be fooled by the trickery of the world. We are called to be set apart. Everything about us is supposed to be set apart. Everything. Okay. So, um, fungus. There was another thing I wanted to look up. Not fungus. Um, oh, uh, check this. Let's see. Does mushrooms have, you know, have to be. Biggest day. Mushrooms do not have seeds. They grow from tiny spores that are not visible to the naked eye. In classification of living organisms, mushrooms fall under the fungi kingdom. Not the plant, the plantae kingdom. Mushrooms don't have roots, don't produce seeds. In some ways, they are as different from plants as they are. As they are, they are as different from plants as they are from animals. Okay? So we need to really take that into consideration. So we got to take that into uh, consideration. They do not have seeds. I'm going to bring up that in a second. Why it's important that they should have seeds. Okay? Uh, I want to pull this picture up. I think it... It shows the different types of mushroom look like. Uh, see the uh, all these are different types of mushrooms. I'm assuming, right? These are normally the ones you see in the yard. This is the one you see growing off of a tree. See the tree right here. But these are all grown from fungus, not from seeds. So I want to show y'all this, not from seeds. Look at this. All these different types. I've never seen this. All right. Now, let's get into the actual scriptures, right? Since we got our definition, we see what it says. I want to go into Leviticus, right? Leviticus, some people call it the dietary law. Or some people say it's not the dietary law. We're really not going to go back and forth and argue that because we know that the Lord did give it to us. For us to understand what can 
and cannot go into our body. Right? This is the this is what you can and cannot eat. This is what you uh this is what you can partake in and not partake in when it comes to food, right? This chapter allows you to understand exactly according to the law, right? For the Israelites, what according to the law is actual food? Because you got a lot of people saying you can eat pork. Nowhere in the Bible was the swine, the pig, ever considered food. A kangaroo, a kangaroo is not considered food. Every animal is not considered food to the Most High. And he passed that law down to his son who passed it down to Jacob. I mean, to uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Jacob passed it down to Moses, right? And to all the children of Israel. So we got to understand what we can and cannot do. I want to pick it up at verse... Um, I'm picking up at verse uh, 44 in Leviticus chapter 11. For I am the Lord, your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, right? That word holy means sanctified or separated, right? So he's telling you to sanctify yourself, separate yourself from what? We separate ourselves from the world, right? From the world. I want to get another scripture really quick. This is going to be James 4 and um, uh, 4 and 4. Just so we can understand. Oh, I just remember that scripture. Pull for you guys. Uh, James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, right? Why he called us adulterers and adulteresses? Because we turned our back on him because, you know, the wedding. We, we both be engaged and spouse to him. Uh, you know ye know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. And that word enmity in the Bible means deeply rooted hatred. Do you know that friendship of the world is a deep rooted hatred of the most high Yahweh? Okay. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Uh now, I know you're talking about, well, how's that food? We're talking about food. But you got to understand, you're taking on the culture of the world. When you, when, you, when you accept that you're an Israelite, your whole life is supposed to change, right? You're supposed to become this new creature. Let's get another scripture to prove our point. Uh, we're going to go to Romans for this, Romans chapter 12. Okay, you got to understand, everything is connected. Even the way we eat. The way we talk, the way we walk, is supposed to be showing the most high in everything that we do, right? Remember, remember the parable? You don't light a, a light and hide it under a bushel. So you can't say, I'm an Israelite, and then eat any kind of way, right? Because when you claim to be an Israelite, remember, the Lord's name, right, a prince of power, he put his name on us, right? Meaning his reputation, he staked everything on us. So we're supposed to walk that walk, right? Same, we have a we have a, a family name, a family crest. If your father don't do it, why are you doing it? Think it, think of it like that. And we're gonna, I'm gonna prove to you that he he does not eat mushrooms. He wouldn't eat it. He wouldn't eat it because he told us what to eat. Just like a parent, a, a parent's not gonna tell you to eat like other than something being super spicy. They like spicy food. But they're not going to tell you to eat something that's harmful when they're not going to eat it. So just understand that. Okay, so look, check this out. This is Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to read uh, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. There go that word again. Holy, set apart, and acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service so if you like mushrooms like i like mushrooms but i understand the scriptures guess what that actually becomes charity or alms for me on the backside because okay i did like those things i did like pork right before i figure out how bad it was i like those things but we turning away from those things well that's 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 part of the living sacrifice right you're sacrificing those things that's a good work it's considered a good work to the Lord. 
You like mushrooms, but you read in the scriptures, mushrooms ain't what the Lord told you to eat. You denying yourself those mushrooms becomes a good work into the Lord because you're showing him that you're willing to be holy in his name. You're willing to set yourself apart. You're willing to be obedient and listen to him. And that's acceptable unto God. Okay. Which is what our reasonable service. Think about it. Turning your life around. Trust me. It, it, the benefits are way more on the backside, right? Eternity, right? You, you don't, you'll never die. You become uh, a part of the, the royal majesty, which is not just becoming a, 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 a royalty by blood, right? You become royalty by blood and spirit, meaning the, the, the greatest kingdom to ever exist. You become royalty in that kingdom, right? And on top of that, you get what people call a superpower, right? You get all these things, right? Uh, you, you get uh, to be seen and to be reverenced as an actual child of the living God. That's the glory. That's glorious. All of you could just put away the things that we're doing down here on earth. Now, this is the main part you need to understand right here. Be not conformed to this, to this world. Conformed is what we already are, right? We did... We were born into a world where we did not already understand, uh, and I'm talking to the ones that's not second generation Israelite, meaning your parent had already woke up and then raised you in the truth. To me, myself, it was me. I'm first generation, right? I've been in the truth going on eight, um, it's going on nine years now. So I've been doing what I need to do, teaching myself, learning, growing, and I'm passing it to my, my kids. Okay, uh, who were already they were already born too when we came into the truth. My son is uh 17, my daughter's 18, so they were young kids, but I still changed their ways too. I, I made them change their way of thinking, okay. Uh, but uh, do not conform to this world, don't fall for it. What they would call the norm or be free or YOLO and all this crap, you know, you don't want to fall for it. You don't want to fall for it, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our mind? Your mind, if you renew it by simply getting on the same page with the most high and his son who teaching us how to get on the same page with the most high, right? You get into these law statute commandments. You realize who you are. You walk different. When you find out you're Israelite, you're like, okay, I'm Israelite. You find out, hey, you, you're above all the nations of the world. Hey, you're supposed to be an example to the, all the nations of the world. You should be walking differently, you know? And I'm going to give you an example. When I came into this truth, the first people I went and tried to tell this truth to was my mother and my brother. Right? My mother and my brother, they didn't believe me. I'm going on nine years. They didn't believe me, right? Um, I started talking about the Bible. I even started talking about how the earth is flat. Right? My, my little brother... He wasn't, he didn't believe me. So we we got into we got into a lot of back and forth arguments. Now this was years ago. But now, but now my mother and my brother are in the church. They 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 they're keeping the law statute of commandments. They're coming in every Sabbath for class, right? Anytime I do a men's meet, my little brother's there. Anytime I do a Bible study, my mother is there, right? Because they're partaking in the fruit. But I noticed that what the scripture said was true. I had to change my walk. They had to understand that I wasn't joking. When I said that, hey, I'm not celebrating Christmas and think, I'm, hey, I don't eat pork no more. You know, you go through the different phases. Hey, man, nothing wrong with eating pork. Hey, man, it ain't no pork in there. Hey, man, uh, you tripping. But now that they realize it, now all of a sudden, they don't eat pork. They don't eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. They... They don't break the law of statute commandments, right? They come to me, hey, man, what about this? What about that? But I showed them that because they seen that I renewed my mind. And not only did I renew my mind, I stood on my business. When they would, hey, come to Christmas, man, you come to Christmas. Hey, man, you always cook. We need you to cook this for Christmas. Man, I'm not cooking anything for Christmas. I'm not cooking anything for Thanksgiving. I don't celebrate that crap. Hey, man, happy birthday. We got cake and ice cream. Hey, man, you wasted your money. Like for three, it took my mom like maybe four or five, maybe six years. She would still buy me a cake. You know, to my mom, she would still buy me a cake. Hey, I'm, 
Mama, goodbye. I, mean, I don't celebrate my birthday. I thank the Lord that I I made it to another year, and I'm rolling. I'm going. I'm going to read some scriptures or something. I'm not celebrating it. I had to break them down. Look, this comes from this, 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 this. This ain't our culture. Now they understand. Now they get it. So now they now they came into the church. But it's like you gotta you gotta you gotta renew your mind and you gotta stand fast and firm in it. And that's the real. That's the real thing that's going to show people. Oh yeah, he don't he don't mess around. He ain't playing. He's serious. And I guess it enticed them to want to say, "Man, this guy was this type of man. He was this type of woman. She was this type of woman." You know, like what? What did the Bible do to make it more upright? Because they could tell you become more upright. You know, I have more more morals and more integrity. I'm more trustworthy. I'm more godly. And that enticed them to come close. And now they starting to read the script. They, well, they are reading the script. They are understanding the script. They come to me to uh, break this scripture down, break this down. What about this commandment? What about that commandment? Can, I do, can we do this? Can we do that? And I became a teacher. But they had to see me walk first. That's what this, that's what this word about. You got to renew your mind right here. That ye may prove what is that good, that acceptable and perfect will of God. And that's what happened. They understood. Okay. So, I changed my whole walk and they see I became a better person and that enticed them to come in. So the whole thing, the whole point I want to make is you got to change your mind frame. Yeah. Mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. They, they not going to just kill you as soon as you eat them. But is that something the Lord wants you to do? And you need to think about that with everything. Is that something the Lord will want you to do? Right. Back in the day, you'd be what, uh, what was it? Uh, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Nice. What what would the Lord do? What would the Lord want you to do? Would he want you to do that? If he said, hey, eat this, eat this, 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 and you're like, well, I like this, it doesn't matter what you like. Quit being selfish. To be to to, to live with the Lord is to not be selfish. You have to understand. To, to to walk in the Lord, meaning you walk in his ways, he don't walk in yours. That's the biggest problem people have. You, the Bible is not made to conform to your ideology. It's for you to it's for you to renew your mind and conform to his. You gotta become more God like. God doesn't become like you. If God became like you, he wouldn't be a God. Right, because he only exists in your mind, and that means he would be different for everybody. He doesn't work like that. We ought to become more like him. So let's go uh, back to Leviticus. Okay, so uh, forty-four. For I am the Lord your God, and ye shall therefore uh, sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 45, I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, ye, uh, therefore be holy, for I am holy. Still right there, look. Therefore, you be holy, for I am holy. Therefore, you set yourself apart because the person you say you following, which is the most high, he is set apart. 46, and this is talking about this chapter, fam. For this is the law of the beast, the beast and of the fowl, the animals, right? The mammals, the animals, the birds, and of every living cre creature that creep it, uh, I'm sorry, and every living creature that move it in the waters, and every creature that creep it upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. And that's what I was telling y'all earlier. Everything is not considered food in the eyes of the Lord. Snake is not food. Possum is not food. Raccoon is not food. Just because people think they put it in their mouth, but that doesn't make it food. Those animals were not created to be consumed. And if you if you think that's not true, why would the Lord go out of his way to tell us that tell us this? He went out of his way to tell us this. Okay? So let's go to Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. And I just want to make a point because this 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 lesson is coming off of that sea bounce lesson. And um 
a lot of people didn't understand when it came to the things in the water, right? They wanted to to deal with the sea mouse. And I bring it up because sea mouse is an algae. Mushrooms are a fungus, right? So check it out. You got to understand. Uh, I want to just pick it up at verse 7 in Genesis chapter, chapter 1. I'm going to explain myself. And God made the firmament, and he divided the waters, which were under the firmament, from the waters which are above the firmament, and it was so. And this scripture right here, if you ever wonder why the sky is blue, this is the scripture for you. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And yeah, and the, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land, the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the water he called the seas and god said it was good and i want to point this out because a lot of people earth is only the dry land right only the dry land that's what's considered earth in the bible earth oh um, let's drop down mm, let's drop down to 28. Is it 28? Yeah, I started 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herd bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth okay one more time if every the, the bible does not you don't have to go outside the bible to read the bible i mean to understand the bible you just have to read it so let me read it again god called the dry land earth and the gathering of and the gathering together of the waters he called seas the earth and the seas are two different things just like night and day a lot of people don't make the difference there's not really a a, a 24 hour day in the bible the bible deal with uh night and day and i'll show you that it's right here uh and God called the light, right? This is after he made the light. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And I'll give you something where Christ confirmed it, right? Let's go to John. John. I believe it's verse 11. And no. Let me see. And Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? Okay. You need to be very aware of biblical definitions, right? When the Bible gives you a definition, that's, that's what you need to apply throughout the scriptures to get the proper understanding of things, right? That's why, um, like the Sabbath, we keep our Sabbath sun up to sun down. We understand, just like in the Old Testament, the, 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 the night before you do your preparations, right? Just like he told them, they prepared the night before Right, but back in the day, remember they only worked during the day. That's why you only hear about a Sabbath day. Christ just said there's twelve hours in a day. The Sabbath always say Sabbath day. You never see Sabbath night because they didn't work at night. So you understand it was about servile work. No servile work during the day. That's why they called it a day. That's what that's what the law was. Built off of. 
All right. So you just, I'm just showing y'all understanding definition. I give you another one. I give you one more. Just, just understanding that the words matter. That's one of the most important things you need to understand. I'll give you another one. And this one will be dealing with like uh the virgin um uh, the the virgin uh deception, right? I'm gonna show you this one. Uh mm, no, it's in uh, sixteen. Like this one right here. And I'm just showing you a little something to understand that the words truly matter. And the words when they used in the Bible in context, you need to understand that those are what we call here, you know, biblical definitions, those are those supersede the the coordinates or they, they can supersede these dictionaries or Google. The Bible know it was God had them translated, you know what I mean? And this is talking about Rebecca. Check it out. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. A virgin neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well. And filled her picture and came up. Right? Very pretty. She was a virgin. Neither had a man known her. So why am I pointing this out? Most people think a virgin is a woman that never had sex. But when you deal with that, and it and in this time, that's how they that's how they use the word. But in the Bible, a virgin is not a woman that never had sex. If that was true. They wouldn't have said a virgin, neither had any man known her, because a virgin can have sex in the Bible. A virgin is, and according to the scriptures, is a, a young lady that's to the age to be married, ready to be married. Right? And even a married woman, she can be a virgin. Now, how is that possible? Because the word virgin just means she's to the age to be married. Let's say that young woman gets married, something happens to her husband, right? He died. Guess what? She's still a virgin because she's able to be married again. Okay? So, when the Bible talks about a woman that wasn't having sex, it always says neither had any man known her. So, that's just another little definition I wanted to show you guys. So, let's go back to Genesis. Back to 28, fam. Back to 28. And uh, no, 29. And God blessed, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herd bearing seed, which is upon all the face of the earth. See, this is what these people didn't, they didn't get it in the other video. And I can swear, I, I think I did touch on this. All the earth, the earth is the land. The Lord never told you to go eat plants out the water. Right, and if somebody sees this video, if I'm wrong, please post the scripture in the comments, and I and I retract. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, Bible said, "Wise man love reproof." I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see myself to be nobody. I'm nothing. I'm not. You know, what I'm saying I don't, I don't brag and boast on myself. Everything I'm giving is of the Lord. I do this for edification for the Lord because I feel as though He called me to do it, and not for personal gratification. That's why most of the time I don't even show my. I only showed my face, you know, and they had a comment in one of the videos. If he was a real, I think he said, I think the guy said if I was uh, a, a real prophet, I can't remember what he said, but he said, I, I would show my face. What do me showing my face have to do with me bringing out scripture? I don't get it. I don't get it. We could just, we could just go back and do like the Bible say in Jude 1 and 3, we could contend for the scripture, we could contend for it and go back and forth, but he said he gave us herbs bearing seed, which is upon all the face of the earth. And it's for the sister to ask about the mushrooms, right? Fruits and vegetables, herbs, bearing seeds. So all that stuff that they sell in the market, you got to be careful. Even when you stop buying them seed of grapes. They're not good for you. Stop buying seedless, seedless fruit and uh, it's not good for you, right? And yes, they are making fake uh, vegetables and uh, you got to be careful with like GMO or whatever. Just do your best to, to you know, and, you know, pray about it. Pray, ask the Lord what he, what he wants you to eat and he'll show you what you need to get. But, uh, oh, another thing, they, they approved at the end of, 
I think it was at the end of um, 2023, they approved the growing of chicken. Last year, the year before last, they approved the growing of ground meat out of a Petri dish. So these are ground meat and chicken. They are now growing it in a lab. So you got to get out there, you know, you got to be careful what you're eating. That processed food is not good for you, right? Healthy, a healthier diet is what me and my family are striving for. We're cutting a lot of things out of our diet, getting them out of the cabinet because they're truly poisoning us. But I just want to show you how this. Every tree in, in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it should be for meat. I mean, that word right there, meat is meaning for food. So he said, eat from the everything on the land. Okay? Things that bear seeds. And I pulled it up, y'all. Do mushrooms have seeds? They do not have seeds. They don't. So, and, and we also pulled up that they don't have much nutritional value. They do not have much nutritional value. So, there's no reason. There's no reason to be eating mushrooms. It's not what we were called to eat, right? The Lord didn't say that. He didn't say eat mushrooms. And I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not sitting here trying to condemn anybody. I'm just sim simply showing you the scriptures as I see them. Uh, of course, always you should be going pray and ask the Most High for the understanding. I showed you the video. I throw seeds out. Somebody else may come behind me and water them, but the increase is of the Lord and the Lord only. So, if you don't get it or don't don't understand, don't don't just attack attack the comment section. People attack the. Have did you go and pray about it? Did you ask God to show you if this true or not? That's what we should be doing. When I see things that I don't automatically agree with, I don't go attack the brothers. You know, I don't go do that. I say, Lord, am I missing it? I watch videos two or three times sometimes. Maybe I missed it. All right, so one more time. God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. Okay. And then just I'm going to cover this too, because I made a statement about everything ain't food. Let's look at this. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat and it was so okay god saw everything that he made and behold it was very good at the evening and the morning were the sixth day so into every beast of the earth into every fowl of earth and everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given green herb for meat but think about it he told us which animals in leviticus 11 right he told us what we can eat even even when the creeping things right I know we can eat locusts. I want to say locusts, manis, and uh, I believe crickets out of the creeping things. Uh, we can eat cow. We can eat uh, deer, antelope, right? Uh, you can eat um, bison, right? Venison, right? Uh, these, these particular animals that chew at the cud, right? And have the splitting foot, but the, the pig and stuff, you can't eat those things. Raccoon and stuff, he told us not to eat those things. Okay, and I want to end it with Psalms. This is Psalms 104 and 14. He called it the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. They say right here, herb is for the service of man, right? And this is letting you know that also fruits and vegetables will heal the body. They are medicine too. But that that goes right back. Things that are the best things for the human body, right? Best things for the Israel. Let's say that not human. Let's say the best thing for the Israelite body is going to be fruits and vegetables yielding seed. Okay? So uh 
Yeah, that's gonna be it. I don't I don't have anything else to bring out on that. Uh you can't eat you can't eat mushrooms because they're a fungus. They're not they're not nutritional, right? According to the Lord's standard, it's supposed to be things bearing fruits, uh, uh fruits and vegetables bearing seeds. Sorry. So with that, I give all honor to the most high. I hope that um the lesson is understandable and that everybody can grasp it. If you have any questions, please post them uh, right there in the uh, comment section, and I will do my best to get back with you. Have all love for you, Israel, man. Hey, stay strong and endure. Kwame Asherallah.